I think we just had a slight connection issue with the audio, but I think I'm back on. No. So on the right hand side, we've got a menu bar with all the markup tools. And you can click in between 2D and 3D. And if I scroll down and we look at, let's say, the dock shelter detail and if we look over at the markup tools you will see that each of these has a little flyout menu where you can actually change the instance of that type you'll see the top one is a freehand markup and when i click it you will see that a menu bar appears at the top of the screen where i can undo redo i've got a private and a public cancel i'm going to save markup so to work with the freehand tool, you will see that when you select the option at the top, you get access to the color of the line style at the bottom. So if I select the line style flyout, I can populate its color and I can also change the line thickness. So if I zoom in on my markup, I can actually get really detailed. So if I click the freehand tool, I can actually start to draw with a lot of detail. And as soon as I add a single markup, the save markup button appears. So as soon as I add something to the drawing, the markup dialog comes up. And you see, because it's freehand, I can simply draw what I want. And if I don't like what I've done, I can simply undo and then go back and start again. If you look at the flyout again here, you've got freehand and you also have the highlight tool. Again, the highlight tool allows you to select the color option and then you can use the highlight tool again so if i undo all of that we look at we have a cloud we have text and we also have some shapes and the new shapes we can go in with a rectangle circle and use a polyline and a line so i'm going to jump in and use the polyline tool change the color to yellow choose the line thickness and i'm just going to add a little detail and you see when you start to use the polyline tool it actually starts to snap to the object on the 2D sheet. So I can fill an area like this. And you see, when you start to use the polyline tool, we have options to obviously change the style again. But new is we also have a fill style. When we select the drop down, so this is like using a Revit fill pattern or an Autodesk hatch, we can actually decide the color of the fill and we can also control the opacity. So if I want to highlight something like that, I can then go in and then choose the next markup. So I've added that. I'm going to add in some arrows. So I can click an arrow where I can select a drop down. And again, with each interface that you choose, you get the drop down where you can actually set the color and also the line thickness. So I've added a polyline, filled it with a region, added an arrow, and then we can use the text button. And here again, we can choose the color of the text. We'll select the text tool and import point. And you'll see you then have for each interface command that you choose, you then have to some contextual menu to control. So I want to say this is going to be some green text. You can decrease or increase the size of the font. You can choose an outline color. So if I want to say that it was, it was no border. And then I've got no fill. In this case, I might want to highlight this with some writing and then to add the text. So I can add in please show insulation. And you'll see there you have it. And then what we can also do now is we can also add some dimensions. When I click the dimension tool, you will see that it allows you to pick a point on the drawing. So if I want to measure the overhang, not currently documented. You can zoom in, click the end point, drag it across, you can see that it will start to snap to the values and you'll see that when I position it, I can then position the dimension and again you get the options for the background, the color of the actual dimension lines and the color of the font. So really interactive and you can do a lot of stuff. When you're looking at the dimension, that is, will be controlled by the measure tools. So if I click measure, 
actually saying, do you want to discard this marker? But in this instance, I will save it. And just to show you the dimension tool, if I click measure and then click the measure settings, I can actually change the precision. And then when I add a new dimension, it will reflect the precision that I've now got. So I've got no, I've got nine two five. So something to bear in mind if you are adding dimensions, it may be better to set up the precision first of all. And then I simply save the markup. When I'm saving the markups, you will see over on the left side of the screen, you then have a list of all the markups that you've added. And when you're adding the markup, you can then choose whether they're private or published, and you can edit, you can change as you go along. So if you add a markup, first of all, and you'll see that it is hyperlinking to the actual space on each drawing. So if I make these published, they will then go to the wider members of the project team. And there we have the markups added. If we close out of the sheet and we look at the 3D environment, we can use the same markup tools to mark up the same information, but this time we can do it within a 3D environment. So when we look here, we can zoom in on a particular area. We can highlight this valve. And again, same principle where I can go freehand, but in this case, I'm going to use a revision cloud. I draw a box around that, and again, each time you add the element, you then have the ability to control the color and also the line thickness. And if you wish to use, you can use a fill, and you can set the opacity. And then I'm going to click the text, add some text. And again, with everything, you can then control the background and then the fill, and I can set the opacity there. And then I can simply add a simple arrow into the element. And if I, you can see on this instance, I've done it the wrong way around, so I undo it, and then I drag the element. And you can see when you put them on, you can just change and do that. And if I'm happy with this markup, I can click Save, and then I can exit the markup view. Go back to my drawing and my list of markups, where I can then navigate between 2D. So there's the markups here, and then I also have a markup within the 3D environment. So that's pretty much it. It's just a new interface for how they've positioned it. Previously, the markup tool would only appear when you create it, but now it's available all the time within each view. And then you simply navigate, and you have a lot more control on the interface elements, visibly the colors, the shading, or the, inter the fill, and then you've got more control around all these elements. So that it brings a close to our first surgery. Um, we will have another surgery next week. And this is surgery number two. And we will look at the integration of partner cards. So hopefully you can join us and hopefully you found the first surgery pretty helpful. And if you have any suggestions, just comment on our YouTube, get in contact with Excitec or myself. Um, our plan is to be quite dynamic with the surgery, bring you the topics that you want to see and answer the questions that you want answered. So thank you very much for joining me and I hopefully will see you all again next week.